Okay, hello and welcome to our third lesson. So today we're going to be walking through the introduction to our DJ equipment. So we're going to be looking at the Pioneer XDJ RX2, which is the controller that I have, which is very close to a club standard controller. It's just a little bit different in terms of the knobs and buttons that it has. Um, so let's get right into it. I think I saw you when I So today's learning objectives are that you will understand the operations of all the aspects of both DJ controllers and club standard equipment, which includes the CDJ 2000s and the DJM 900, which in, in Perth, Australia is currently the club standard. There are decks that are more advanced out there right now, like the CDJ 3000s, except not a lot of places have them just as yet when I'm recording this because they're quite new at the, at the moment. You will have confidence in heading into DJing for a club or party environment through knowing the, everything about the decks. Um, you'll understand the difference between controllers and club equipment setups, and you will be able to recognize the differences between low, middle, and high sound frequencies and how they're relevant for your DJ equipment and relevant for mixing as well. So, um, the my DJ controller is a XDJ RX2. So, I want to go over this equipment first because uh, this guide is designed uh, for complete beginners and therefore it is much more likely that you will buy something like this or cheaper, more than likely. So, the XDJ RX2 is one of the closest controllers to the club standard setups, as I said, in terms of its functionality. It has almost the same functions and capabilities as a professional club setup, except for just a few missing uh, knobs and buttons, pretty much. So I've used the uh, DJM 2000 and two CDJ 2000s before um, when I had that set up. However, I sold it as the XDJ RX2 was much smaller and lighter for the work that I needed at the time, which was quite a while ago now. So let's get into the walkthrough of everything on the controller and how it affects our mixing capabilities. So we'll be looking at everything on the controller, let's go. All right, up here to the right, we normally have on each CDJ will be a USB spl uh, slot up the top of each one. And that's how the club standard equipment works when you have the CDJ separate to the mixer. On this console, however, you've got both of them on the same side just because it's for better for space and the things that it's got on the console. Now, of course, what I like to do is I will have at least two USBs. I always bring extras to the gig and I'll plug one USB into each CDJ. Now, there is a link cable when you're at clubs and bars that can link it to each other. So you really might only need one USB and you can actually get it up on both screens using the one USB. However, sometimes you might go somewhere and they don't have the link cable. So it's always good to bring two USBs or more so you can plug them into each CDJ individually. So that's the slot to put the uh, USB in. When you plug it in, it'll just come up on the screen and you can start using the USB as long as you've used record box uh, with the USB on that program. If you ever need to stop the USB or eject it, just hold down this button here, hold it down until the button, uh, the light stops flashing and turns off, and then you're safe to eject the USB. A little handy tip, which I've discovered in the past by making mistakes, is that you have to make sure that you're not playing on that USB when you take it out. So if you do make a mistake and you are pulling out the wrong USB by ejecting it, when you press that button in, it'll actually turn the sound down. So it'll sound like this. And then when I hold it down, we go. So you actually hear the song level drop is telling you that you're ejecting that USB. So like, are you sure? And you've only got a split second to make that decision to take your finger off the, otherwise it will eject the USB and turn the music off. All right. Now let's go up to the top here. Now we have just the usual um, browser up here on the CDJs, which are the club standard. You have them on each CDJ, so one screen on each, but it probably won't be as big as this and you'll have only an individual wave, wave form on each. So that one will be on that one, that one will be on that one. All right, so it won't be as good as it is here where you get to see it on top of each other. Um, so just like a normal browser, you can select uh, the USB, so which USB you're using. Uh, you've got the browse button, so it'll go back to your playlist. Back button here, and the scroll wheel, you can go into the different playlists like that. I'm currently in the house playlist and in tech house. Now, if you want to get back to your songs, all you have to do is go boom, 
press the browse button back to the song as you go the menu button now the menu button is really important if you press it you'll go into how you can sort your music i like to sort my music by bpm that way i get my transitions really good but there's all sorts of ways here as you can see that you can sort your music by the key default which is how it goes into your record box program and then it goes on to usbs alphabet artist album ratings so all sorts of things there also play state as well got that now if you hold down the menu button for long enough it'll come up with utility so this is your like settings area on some cdjs it's really important to go into this before you play because it'll actually have the quantize button on there for you now we've got quantize here which is lucky for us so some cdjs some older ones you have to go into the menu to get the quantize option up now quantize is really important because when I'm uh, pressing play and doing loops, for example, it'll always, as long as I get the timing somewhat right, it'll always lock it nice on the lines for me. Now, if I didn't have quantize on, this is what happens. Now, it's hard to see on the screen there because I was, I did it pretty good actually. I'll, I'll try it again so I can try to get it better for you guys. See how now it doesn't lock in on the line? So now I've actually just stopped it halfway through the beat there. So that's not what you want when you're looping, otherwise it's gonna make a really messy loop. So when of course you're looping things like that, you have to have the quantize set on if you wanna make it nice and clean. And then of course we have the MIDI button over here. That's if you're plugging in the laptop, you'll use the MIDI instead of the USB buttons. And uh, when you go to uh, browse the song, you press the info button and it brings up all the information for you, like the key, which is in 5A. I've got it in the Camelot system at the moment, and the time, which uh, folder it's in or what uh, genre it is, and who made the song, and what the song is, of course, and the date. It all depends on what you put in your record box is what's going to show up on the screen there for you like that. And the other thing is, when you're in the song with the waveform, you can always change the size of the waveform by scrolling with this wheel here. So if you scroll up to the left, it's gonna zoom out of the waveform, so make the waveform really, really small. So it'll zoom out, and if you turn it to the right, it'll zoom right in for you, so it makes it nice and easy to see. I like it somewhere about halfway, so you can still see what's coming up, and you know you can see the waveform quite clearly. All right, and then we have the time and auto cue button down here. Now if I press this button, it'll actually reverse the times on screens here. So at the moment, what I like to use is the timer counting down so you know how long you have left in the song. But if you press it once on here, it will make it so the time is going up. So you have to know how long the song is and then you'll have to kind of figure it out from there. So I like to have the timer going down at all times. Now we also have the auto cue button here. If you press this in, so I've pressed in, auto cue is on. So if I go to the end of the song now, it should go to the next song or on its own. So it's gone to the next song on its own and it started playing, which I find really, really annoying. And some DJs will leave that on. So now the auto cue is off. What's going to happen is at the end of the song, if I let me go back. End of the song, oh, there it is. It will not start playing the next song. Auto cues on, and now it's set up for you and it's ready to go. All right, so that is the auto cue feature. Now it can be yeah, really annoying if people leave it uh, off for you. Now let's get into the mixer. So this is, of course, the most important part of your DJing is what happens on the mixer here. So we'll start at the bottom. We've got the crossfader. Now we've got this button here, the crossfader curve. I've got it set on through, which means it doesn't matter which way it goes, it's always going to just depend on which one of these faders here up. These are the volume faders. So it always depends on the volume faders of which one is up or down. So if I press this on, that's going to come through. It doesn't matter which way this goes. Let's bring that down. Press this on. There we go. Bring it down. Doesn't matter which way it goes, it's always going to play through. So that's the through setting. Sorry, I just queued up that last song I had. I like that one. Now, if I switch it to curved fade, that means it's going to slowly curve the sound to the next song. So if I do this, so I've got a curved fade, 
That means you have to have it to the side of the song that you're playing itself. This is mainly used for hip hop DJs, not really for any other genre. You don't really need the cross fader, just the normal volume faders, okay? So you have to have it to the side, which you're playing through. So I'm playing through channel two right now, so I have to have it to that side. Now if I bring it across, you hear the, the volume starting to fade. Until the very edge and it will stop playing. It will turn it off. We'll not turn it off, but it'll, the, the volume will turn off. All right, now I'll do the same from this side. And it just stops the music. I actually still hear it in my headphones because of course I still got the two Q buttons on. All right, now if I set it to the other cross fader setting, this is what it's gonna sound like. So I've got it right over to the right hand side. I'm on channel two. So you can see with that one, it doesn't have a curved sound, it doesn't go down like this. The, the sound goes straight across, and you see it on the symbol there as well. The sound goes straight across, and then as you hit the edge, that's when it turns off. So a lot of people use that for scratching, when they're using the, the scratching and going like this, okay? So I'll show you with the other song. So the sound still sounds the same, same volume, and then just turns off. So that's that setting. I always like to have it sit on through because I only use the volume faders. So I don't really use the cross fader at all, to be honest. Don't really need to because I don't play hip hop that often. All right, or R&B or things like that. Okay, so I've shown you the cue buttons here. You need these cue buttons when you're listening in your headphones. So if you don't have this on and you've got this song playing in this channel here, I can't hear anything in the headphones. Now, if I turn it on though, I've got my headphone level up, this is the headphone level down here, and I like to set the mixing to Q. And turn it off, and we can't hear it anymore. So you need that Q button on if you're gonna be listening to songs in your headphones, which is gonna be all the time. Now, so I've shown you that's the level uh, knob for the headphone uh, noise level. This is the mixing. So if you want the mixing more towards the Q song, which is the song you've got not playing, then you have it towards the Q. If you want the mixing kind of fairly even, you put it up here. And what it will do is in your headphones, when you've got these two songs playing at once, it will sound as if it would if you had them playing like this. Now, but if you set it more towards the Q, it'll favor your headphones more towards the channel that is not playing at the moment, which is gonna be this one here. Oh, and, it, and if you have that button off, that is. So you have to have that button off, just listening to this one, and it will go more towards the Q for you instead of listening to both songs. All right. Now, we come over here to the filters. So we got the uh, parameter here. I like to have the parameter just set on halfway, it's nice and easy. If you have it too low or too high, it kind of mixes with the filters a little bit. So we've got the low and high pass filter here, I'll show you what it sounds like. That's a high pass. And we've got a low pass. Alright. And then we've got the sweep button. So sweep. Slightly different, but at least you can hear what it sounds like. So with that one, we can kind of hear like a white noise sweep. If you've ever done producing, you'll know what that is. Uh, and then we've got the dub echo, which is a really cool one as well. So the dub echo is cool, kind of makes that little echo reverby effect. Now on uh, other mixes, that are like the DJM 900, you might have a couple more uh, extra options there as well. So we use these two to use the filters. So these two knobs to use the filters, of course. And the parameter is the sound of the filter or the, the harshness of the filter. So I'll show you what it sounds like on the high and low filter with the parameter on mi uh, minimum. Right. 
So it's not really that harsh. Now if I take it right up to max. Really harsh, and I don't really like the sound of that. So I always like to have it on the halfway or just below halfway. Usually I think that sounds the best when you're playing out to crowds. All right, um, so I said, yep, these uh, knobs here are the sound color effects buttons or the uh, filter knobs. So this one's used on the channel to the right. This one's used on the channel to the left or channel one, channel two. Now it's gonna be the same for all these knobs here. All these knobs here are for the deck on the right. All these knobs here are for the deck on the left, and that's why they're separated through the middle. On your DJM 900, you might have an extra two lines of that, so you have to make sure you check the channel numbers. So we've got channel one and two on this one, but on a DJM 900, a club standard mixer, you might have channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four. And so that way you have to make sure you know which channel your CDJs are on when you're using it all the time. Well, you might have four CDJs, and if you're lucky, and then you have to really make sure you're checking which channel you're using when you're mixing the songs in. Now, these knobs here are the most important knobs on the decks. So these are the knobs you're gonna be using all the time. It's our low, middle, and higher frequency knobs. Now, the way that we need to think about these knobs is like as if sound is a spectrum. So all the sound you listen to is always a spectrum from low, zero frequencies all the way to the really high frequencies. Now, so the bottom knob here controls the low frequencies, middle knobs control the middle frequencies, and high knobs control the high frequencies. Who would have thought? All right, so when you're doing a song, when you're uh, mixing a song, when you take out the low frequencies, it's gonna take out the kicks and the bass. So let's show you with this song here. No, you the bass. if you turn it up it's going to really emphasize the kick in the bass now the middle of the song is more of the lyrics and the main body of the song so uh or some of the lyrics so but it's the main body of the song so if i take out the middle eq button oh, so eq knob that's what they called sorry it's going to take out most of the song so all that's left is the high and low frequencies which is the bass or sub bass and the really high pitch frequencies like the hats All right, and then of course the high frequencies, more of the hats, the really high stuff, and, and kind of like your sweeps and your high frequency uh, sound effects and things. And a lot of the vocals. So of course those are for that one. These ones are for this CDJ. I've already gone over that. All right, so then we have our trim knobs up here. So the trim, is kind of your noise level through the channel. So we've got channel two here, channel one here. Channel two controls this deck, channel one controls that deck. So the trim knobs, the higher you turn it, the more decibels you're gonna get through that channel. So I'll show you what it's like. So it's sitting on about plus three decibels. If I turn it down, it's gonna bring it right down. You can't even see the sound bar anymore. So it's going to ride up. Now if we go really high, then we're going to be redlining it. So the with the trim, it's important to try and keep it up nice and high near the red line zone if you can, but not redlining. So if you're redlining, you're going to be hurting the speakers that are at whatever venue you're at. So always try and avoid the red line, but in some cases, you might need to try and get up as high as possible if they've got a really bad sound system. And then of course you've got the master volume up in the middle here. Master volume controls the volume for everything. So you can still have the trim. The trim controls the channel volume. And the master volume will control everything. So everything you're playing out. Let's go so think of the master volume as whatever is going out to the speakers that is controlling everything that's going out to the speakers. All right guys, sorry to cut the lesson short there. If you want to learn more about this subject or more about DJing, head down to the link in the description, which is beginnerdjcourse.com. On my website, you can find out lots more about how to DJ and all the things you'll need to learn to go from zero to someone who's ready to play at music festivals and clubs and events. See ya.